Welcome to a problem on two-dimensional arrays. In this particular problem, I am going to talk about addition of a matrix. So let us say I have got an input matrix which contains two rows and two columns. As you can see here, I have asked the user to enter the number of rows and columns in a matrix. He or she is going to enter, let's say, two rows and two columns. So in the first matrix, I am going to enter one, two, three and four. So this is the zeroth row, this is the first row. Similarly in matrix B, I am going to enter five, six, seven and eight. Now matrix addition is very simple. I will add one with five, two with six, three with seven and four with eight. So if you look at the addition, one with five has resulted in six, two with six has resulted in eight, three with seven has resulted in 10, 4 with 8 has resulted in 12. Now we'll just talk about how we can do this particular problem. In order to solve this particular problem, I'll require one matrix, let me call it as A, which is going to store the rows and columns of the first matrix. Matrix B, which is going to store the rows and columns of the second matrix. And matrix S, which is going to store the sum of A plus B. Now, although I have defined the number of rows and columns as 50 and 10 respectively, the user is not going to generally enter a 50 into 10 matrix. He may enter a 3 by 3, a 4 by 4, a 2 by 2 or whatever size matrix. So first what I am going to do here is, I am going to ask the user enter the number of rows and columns in matrices. So let us say he enters a 3 by 3. So number of rows is 3, number of columns is also 3. First thing what I am going to do here is I am going to ask him enter the numbers of matrix A. In order to enter the numbers of matrix A, I am going to pass this array A. I am going to pass the value of rows and the value of column. As you are aware by now, arrays are passed by address. So when I pass A to read 2D array, here you can see in 2D array, I am taking i equal to 0, i less than row, j equal to 0, j less than the number of columns and I am reading row by row all the numbers into this particular array A. So the A here is x here. This R and this R, although they have the same names, they are two different memory locations because I have passed R and C by value. So in this particular thing, as I have explained in a prior problem, I am trying to read values into the rows and columns of a matrix. So what is going to happen is it's going to read 1, 2, 3, 4 as the user is going to enter. During an actual demonstration, I will show you how the numbers are entered. Now I have asked the user, enter the elements of matrix B. Similarly, I am going to pass the address of matrix B. I am going to pass the number of rows and the number of columns, which is going to be the same as matrix A. So if you see here, the prototype of read to array states that the first parameter is going to be a two dimensional array. The next two are going to be integer values, which are going to be passed by value. Then what I have done is I am not going to type this print sum array because it's a simple print, which I'm going to explain as I run the particular piece of code. Now I have add array as a function. Add array has three important parameters, array A, array B and array S which is going to store the sum of A plus B. R and C indicate the number of rows and columns in matrix A and B respectively. Now let's try to type in the code for add array. I have got x, y, in x is equal to A, y is B and z is equal to S. Now what I am going to do here is, I am going to declare two integer variables i and j. These are variables required for me to travel into the array and do the addition. So for what I am going to do is for i is equal to 0, i less than the number of rows i plus plus. And then similarly for j is equal to 0, j less than number of columns and j sorry j plus plus alright. And here what I am going to do is I am going to say x of i comma j. 
sorry not x of i it is z z is holding the value of the sum so z of i comma j sorry i j is equal to x of i'll just do a copy paste so that we just save a few keystrokes oh sometimes this is what happens when you try to save some things undo all right thanks to the undo button no problem so I'll just copy it here x of i j plus y of i j all right so i am going to add the matrix using this simple addition x of i j is equal to x of i j plus y of i j so first zero throw first column then when j becomes one it will be zero throw sorry first it will be zero throw zero column then j becomes one zero throw first column zero throw second column zero throw third column then i will increase by one then it will be first row zero column first row first column first row second column first row third column this particular process of addition will carry on now the printing is simply very easy for printing sum of the array i am passing the array yes yes holds the sum of a plus b so if you see the parameters of print sum array or the prototype declaration it's got one Two dimensional array called as sum and two integers indicating the number of rows and columns in add array i had three two dimensional arrays and the row and column so in print sum of the array what i am doing here is sum of two matrices okay i am simply printing this sum i am saying for i equal to zero i less than r j equal to zero j less than r sum of ig zero throw zero column zero throw first column zero throw second column and so on this particular process will continue after i print the first row i have to do a print slash n so that i go to the next row that's why this slash n is very important when you're using arrays so it helps you take you to the next row so here let me put a message printf calculating the sum so this way I know that I'm in this particular function to calculate the sum. Messages like this are very useful because it helps me know that I'm in add array, I'm in print array and so on. So what I can do is, let me take this particular piece of code. Let's try to paste it into the online GDB, online GDB C compiler and let's pray that it runs. And let's first hope it compiles. Okay, something miraculous. It's compiled in the first chance, but let's hope it works. Three into three number of rows is three number of columns is three so it's asking me enter the three rows and three columns so i'm entering row number zero one two three okay row number zero all the three columns then four five and six okay then seven space eight space and nine so i have finished entering matrix a now see what i am doing i am entering numbers of matrix b let me again enter same so it's easy to verify 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Alright, so I've entered both the matrices with the same values. So every position is simply going to be double of that in the sum array. So here if you see sum of two matrices turns out to be 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 2, 4, 3 plus 3, 6, 4 plus 4, 8, 5 plus 5, 10. Okay, 6 plus 6, 12. 7 plus 7, 14, 8 plus 8, 16, and 9 plus 9, 18. So this was a very simple problem which showed you how to find the sum of two arrays. For now, please stick around with using functions and declaring the prototypes in this particular manner using both the row and the column for declaring a two-dimensional array. Later on, when you get to a little more concepts in C, I'll teach you the relationship between pointers and arrays arrays especially the pointers and two dimensional arrays which is a little different and requires a little deeper explanation so this is the way you should go about declaring rows and columns please use to write every code using functions because that's the only acceptable way in a campus interview as well as in your companies so if you see here i'm just reading the first array reading the second array in this particular fashion here i'm doing the addition using this simple line sum is equal to a of i plus b of i j respectively and there here i'm simply printing the sum of the array using this so just be sure you use this kind of a declaration in the prototype as well as when you are passing parameters so i hope this problem helped you understand how do you do the addition of two matrices 
multiplication is also quite simple except that you need to check the m into n concept whether it's equal on both the sides otherwise you would not be able to multiply the matrices.